on Gavin on Friday. You bring drinks. One spade. Okay. Anybody watch the video on this? Oh. Very no, actually the work. Did. So at least one diamond was the example that I used in the video. Okay. They are very closely related, so it'd be very helpful for you to watch those. So at least one spade. How many ways can that happen, or how do we count all those ways? Well, using permutations, combinations, whatever it is, the terms that we need to use, we can have one exactly one spade. Like we can count. How many ways are to get exactly one spade? Then we can count how many ways are to get exactly two, exactly three, exactly four, or exactly five, all five uh, cards being spades. So um, now let's start with one. Right. When we get one spade in that hand, there is basically two things going on here. First, we get a spade, and then we get a, we get not spades. We get one spade and Four, not spades. Are these so, spades for like playing cards? Yeah. Okay. So how many ways are there to get one spade? Just to pick a card that is a spade. One fourth. No, you're thinking about it this way. How many ways are there? There's twelve, no, eleven. Fourteen. No, thirteen. Thirteen and fourteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. That's thirteen. There's no one of spades. We have an ace of spades. Exactly. Which is the one. And then it goes to. All the way up is 10. So there's 11 digits plus. Yeah. Yeah. So there's 13, 13 spades. How many ways are there to get four cards that are not spades? 38. 39. But we're picking four of those cards, not just one of those cards. Yes, there are 39 cards that are not spades. 39 times 4? No, there's one four. Um, 2 to the 4. 2 to the 4? 39 to the 4. 39 to the 4. Mm. No. Okay, so we are picking some out of a group of 4. From a big group, we're picking a small group. From a group of 39, why 39? Because of the J13 minus 52 is. 32 minus 13 is 39. That'd be the number of cards that are not spades. We're taking out of that group, right? We'll put aside the spades, and then we'll just start taking all the, taking four cards at a time out of the not spades, right? Okay, there's that four can go, and that four, and that four, and that four, and we keep putting them together and finding every possible combination, right? When we take some from a bunch, we should think combinations and permutations. We take four out of 39. And then I have to decide, is it is order important or is it not important when I choose the cards from a deck of cards? No, no, not really. No, it doesn't matter if I get the two seven or the king before the, the queen. It doesn't matter unless what the order is given. Unless it mentions the order. Unless it matters. Unless it mentions it, yeah. So in that case, we're using permutations or combinations. If order is not important. Combinations. Combinations. Order is not important when we're talking about combinations. Okay, now we're gonna get two spades, exactly two spades. Oh, let's go back here. How how do we put these together? Okay, so a combination lock isn't a combination lock, it's a permutation lock. It's a, it's a permutation lock. I should submit that. It's false uh, advertising. I suppose. <laughs> if we have uh, 13 ways this can happen and then 39 C4 ways this can happen, how do we find out how many ways they can happen together? Multiply them together. Yeah, there's 13 ways this can fir this first thing can happen, and then whatever 39C4 is, and 39C4 again, and 39C4 again, off of every branch, we get 13 times 39C4. Get rid of that. Next, we're going to use exactly two spades. We're going to get two spades, and then three not spades. That little thing means not. Okay, we're going to 
to first pick two spades, how many ways are there to pick two spades? Two spades out of how many spades? 13. There are 13 spades, right? We want to figure out all the ways that I can get two spades. It could be but any combination of two and there's only 13. Yeah, there's only 12 left. Right, but combinations and permutations take care of that. Okay. It will never reuse. In fact, if you want to reuse things, you can't use combinations and permutations. So it'll take care of that. So we're choosing from 13 things, 13 spades. We're taking them in a way that the order is not in order. How many are we taking? Two. So 13 C2. From 13, we're choosing two in a way that order doesn't matter. How about, how many ways are there to choose three things that are not spades? 39, 3. Then we're going to get three spades, and then we're going to get two not spades. How many ways are there to get three spades? 13, C3, and two not spades. 39, C2. Four. 13, C4 would be how we get four spades. And how many ways are there to get one not spade? 39. Just 39, right? You're just taking one of them. There's 39 of them to choose from. Take the first one, that's the first way. The second one, that's the second way. All the way down to the 39th way. So just 39. Or, if we do it, do it in terms of combinations, uh, that would be 39C0. Zero. One card. We're taking one card out of 39. You know, oh. order doesn't matter, but it's kind of silly. Um, and then how many ways are there to choose five cards that are all spades? Go a flush. A flush of spades. How many ways are there to choose that? Thirteen. Thirteen. C five. We want all the five all five cards come from the spades. So think when we're using combinations of permutations, I want to take this many out from this group of things. And if I want those things to be spades, then I'll always choose out of the spades. If I want them to not be spades, I'll choose out of the not spades thing. So we multiply this, multiply this, multiply this, multiply this, and then that's just what it is. And then once we know this number, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and we multiply them all together, what do we do with all those numbers? This is how many hands have one spade, how many have two spades, how many have three, four, and five spades, exactly. What would we do with all those numbers? Would you multiply them together? Two five plus five. Well, that would imply there's some kind of like a sequence of things happening. Like we get one kind of hand, and then we get another kind of hand, and then we get. It. We just want to know how many ways are there to get this kind of hand, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. This one. We should add, add them all together. Yeah. So this is how everybody we get from that, from that, from that, from that, from that. We add them all together. Okay. So if you haven't started doing that, don't, because that's going to take forever, and there's it's definitely an easier way. You do get one spade, two spades, three spades, four spades, or five spades, or how many spades? None. No spades. And if we think about it in that way, that's every single possibility for every hand. Like every hand can be put in one of these categories, right? You know, it has, uh, oh, I look at this hand, it has three spades, so I put it right here. Mm -hmm. I look at this hand, oh, it has five spades, so I put it right here. This hand has no spades, so I'll put it in this group, right? And if we put all those groups together, that's every possible hand. Every five card hand is inside of here somewhere, right? So, first, let's see how many ways are there to get no spades, no spades at all. Thirteen. Thirty-nine C five. Thirty-nine C five. Just like this is thirteen C five because we're taking the five out of all the just the thirteen that are spades. Here we're going to take all five out of the thirty-nine that are not spades. Futuristic C four. Nope. Um. How many ways are there for that to happen? 39 C5. Got one, maybe two people doing it. Can I go to start the meeting? What? It's your question. You asked it. <laughs> I guess we're just flipping things, so 13 ways. Not ways. I have 13 ways. Of 57, 57, 57. Yeah. That's a creepy number. All right. That's so how many ways. What? You can't get at least two spades. Don't get any spades at all. Everything in the hand is not spades. Okay. So this 
together with all of these should add up to every possible hand. There's no hand that does not go into one of these categories. So if we take all of them and subtract no spades, should we close the arrow? Nope. All possible hands, every one of them, one spade, two spades, three spades, four spades, all five spades, no spades, that's all of the hands. One spade. You take away the hands that don't have any spades, and you should get all the other, other, other hands which are one spade and more. Okay. And you break things into these categories and say, well, there, either I can calculate all of this, or I can take this away from the total. By counting any now the total and how to check it away? Yes, we do. So how do we calculate the total number of hands that we can make from a deck of cards? <coughs> Well, 52C5. 52, we're going to choose from any of the 52 cards that we want. We're going to pick them in a way that order does not matter. How many we're picking? We're picking five of them, five card hand, like poker. Minus, 57, 57, 57. What exactly are you going to do? Just equal to grams or something? Right here, 39C5. Um, yeah, is there a way to plug like 52C5 into the calculator and take away the Yeah. And the CR. 52. Hit the math button. Go over to the PRB, and there it is, right there. So you, you hit our 52 already. Yeah, it was math. Over to the PRB, probability. You can even also go left one if you want. Go down to NCR. And then we hit five because we're going to choose five out of the 52. Because in my homework, I was doing it all by hand. That's intense. Using the formula. Well, I wasn't here, so I didn't know that that worked. That's okay. I only published a video of what we did in class and an example of problems, but that's all right. Yeah, but it's too much work to look things up, so it's less work to do more work by myself. Sure it is. <laughs> so what is that? 2,598,960. Yeah. Okay. Minus all of the hands that don't have any spades in them. Should leave all the hands that have a spade. What's the Two million. Twenty-three thousand. Twenty-three thousand. Two hundred. Yeah. So, in reality, all this stuff that you did, like one, two, three, four, five, below the zero thing, yeah, we didn't need to do it. Didn't need to do it. So why did we do it? Show you that you don't want to do it. Show you the advantage of doing what we did do. I agree with you, it's not worth doing. Really? Because like an hour ago, I would have done the one, two, three, four, five all out by hand, and it would have really sucked. Right. But now you know that you don't have to do that. Um, yes. So we could do the same thing if it said, what about uh, at least two spades? Right? Then we could the cut off would be right there. So we could calculate all of this, or we could calculate these two things. A little bit of work, but we can figure out these two things and take that away from the total. And then we would know the rest is two or more. Okay, now what if they said at least three spades? Now it's kind of a wash. Right? Do I calculate the three, four, and the five and add those up? Or do, they, do I calculate the zero, one, and two, add those up, then take that away from the total? I guess maybe this would be a little bit faster because we don't have the subtraction step. And then if it said at least only one four, energy. right, if it said, what's the probability you'll pick a hand that has five spades in it? Or not probability, sorry, but the, uh, the number of ways that you can choose a hand that has five spades in it, that's the, the number of ways. Or at least four, that would be this the one. The probability this one. would be the number of ways over the number of possible right. The probability would be this number over this number. We'll get, that to, get to that today. So okay. 259896 is an important number in cards. Remember that, Kevin. So what's the uh, next question? Well, from which section? 2.1. Maybe you want to do that one. Making license plates here. For, for everything. Two 
uh, letters followed by five digits. So, what does repeats mean? Does repeats mean okay? Means that it can be like one, one, two, three. So we can have one and then also another one, or one, two, and then another one. Like we could use the same number twice. But if we don't have repeats, then we can't. You can use a one, you're done with one, you don't use it anymore. All right. Um, Now, how about we count the repeats? Uh, let's look at it as one key thing here is being able to say, uh, you know, to phrase it in such a way that this happens, then this happens, then this happens. Look at it as a sequence of events. This, then this, then this, then this, then this. Okay? Because order does matter in relationships. Yeah, but it's not always that it's because order matters, it's just because we want to be able to multiply them together. So we gotta be able to count this thing and then count this thing and then multiply those things together. So what's the first thing that happens when making this license plate? You get a letter. You get a letter. Okay? So let's just put uh, at one end one is a letter. What's the next thing that happens? A letter. Letter, what's the next thing that happens? A number. A number. Yeah. And then a number. Right? We're gonna pick five numbers all together. It may have been easier just to write five D's instead of five. So the first letter you choose, how many possibilities are there? 26. 26. And we can repeat these letters, so what, how many choices do you have next? 26. 26. If you didn't have the choice of repeating, you'd only have how many? 25. Um, okay, so that's give you some insight here. All right, then numbers. How many digits do we have to choose from? 10. 10. Repeat is okay, so 10, 10, 10. We multiply all of that together. How about no repeats? 25, or no, 26, then 25, then 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, we multiply those together. So a state like California does A and a state like Montana does B. A one or two digit number saying which county you live in. And they're 56 counties. Uh, there's another way to look at this, though. We can look at it as two things happening. When there aren't repeats allowed, combinations of uh, permutations are the realm we're in. Combinations of permutations are a way to count how to choose some stuff from a larger group of stuff uh, where we don't repeat anything. We just select some and we don't put anything back. So uh, the first thing would be two letters. And the next thing would be five digits. How many letters do we have to choose from? From, choose from. 26. 26. How many are we choosing? Two. Are we choosing them in a way that order is important or it's not important? Important. It is important, right? Uh, a, B, and B, A are going to make different license plates. Right? If the policeman calls in and says, or they knock on your door and they're like, well, your license plate, A, B, one, two, four, five. Oh, no, mine's B, A, one, two, four, five. Sorry, have a nice day. Because that's not your license plate, right? Your, your vehicle is not seen at that crime. So we use permutations when order is important. When A, B is different from B, A, we use permutations. How many digits do we have to choose from? Five. How many are we choosing? Five. And is order important? Yes. Yes, it is. So we use permutations. So either way we go, you multiply all this. Like 26 times 25, that is the result of 26 P2. But if you did the formula with the, the factorials, everything would cancel except for 26 times 25. Same thing here. If you did the, the formula for 10 P5, everything would cancel out except for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 multiply together. Either way you go. So what does that come out to be? This button is so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody get it? I got it. 
What do you got? 19 million, 650,000. Good. Wow. Well, I had it before, and it's just, uh, I want to write it down to but then I lost interest. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be more wow. or fewer? More and more. Yeah, when you allow the repeats, you allow more possibilities. It's going to be a bigger number. Any other questions? Do you want to hear the number? Sure, do you have it? 67 million, 67 Nice, even ish round. And uh, five zeros, that'd be to minus five multiples of a factor to 10. Mm -hmm. 626 must be 632. Oh, for sure. Class rings. Uh, so you are going to pick a ring. You're going to pick the metal. Okay. Well, that could be any three of those metals. Aura right. light, gold, or silver. And there's mm -hmm. six options for the size. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could choose after choosing the metal. But I also could choose any of those six after choosing gold. Or I could choose any of those six after choosing silver. And then with the 12 stones after choosing any of those six. Every one of these gets 12 more options, right? So the first option is the metal. You can choose any of three metals, three branches there. Next, we choose wait, the side. Wait, wait a second. Yep, aura light. What? What's that? What's aura light? It's not relevant. Don't That's what know. it is. You are not relevant. Side, there's, there's six different options for the side. So that's three times six so far. We have 18 possible rings, right? I choose gold, and then I choose music, and then I choose silver, and I choose literature. All together, if we put together all those different combinations, I would have three times six, 18. After those 18 options, yeah, I have to, them. off of each of those, allow for the possibility for any 12 of these stones to be in there. So for every 18 has 12 more options, so the stone makes us multiply those 18. I never saw the point of having a stone. By 12. It's an opportunity for the ring makers to make more money. 18 times 12? So we're going to power 60. 60? 16. 16. 16. That's what I think. Yeah. Right, 16. Should we take account for the possibility of not having a side design and not having a stone? I don't know about not having a stone, but not having a side design. The Ring of Power didn't have a side design. <laughs> or it didn't have a stone. <laughs> but it had an inscription. On the inside. That's a side. Well, it's well, no. On the outside. The inside. On the, inside the inside. It has a side design. Side. So we could allow for no side design. Sure. It yeah, could just blank. be plain. Sure. And no stone. I didn't do anything in high school. Your ring doesn't have a stone. <laughs> this is a wedding band. It's not a high school ring. Three times seven times 12, that could give us another possibility. How many would that be? Four. Oh, we're allow seven. We would allow, allow actually it would allow thirty-six times more than. Thirty-six times. So two. Two hundred fifty-two. So two fifty-two. Okay. Yeah. Now we. So oh, not thirty-six times more. Thirty-six more options. Yes. Yeah. Not thirty-six times more. Yeah. Yeah. And then what if we didn't want to stone? I just don't think you get to do that. Well, it's going to just to be a big hole <laughs> where stone goes. No. Well, why can't they make it round? It's a suicide like ring. I just don't Whoa, know. whoa, that's a little far. Yeah. And also a 40. Um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's 
Oh, you want to do the 40, all right. Yeah. Moving on. Number 40. No. Okay. If we allow for no, for no rock, that would be 273. Now. Okay, by the number of permutations here, we'll we use the formula. And it'll be 11 factorial over 11 minus 4 factorial. 7,020. look at what's going on here. This is how to choose four things out of 11, so that order is important. So A, B, C, D is different from A, B, B, C, and we keep reordering those four things, and then we move on to four more things, and rearrange those all the different possible ways. So what happens here, so you take 11 times 10 times 9 times uh, 8 times 7 and so on, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. And then we're dividing by, what is this going to be? This is uh, 7 factorial. 7 factorial, 11 minus 4 is 7 factorial. It means 7 times every number before it. Well, this is also 7 times every number before it. This is 7 factorial. It cancels the factor of 7 factorial. And so we're just left with this. That means that can be interpreted as the first thing I choose can be any of the 11. The next thing I choose can be any of the remaining 10, any of the remaining 9, any of the remaining 8. And that also counts, you know, this, this thing could be A, this could be B, this could be C, this could be D. Or I could have chosen B to be first, and then A possibly could have been next, and then C, and then D. It counts as all different things. And it also counts every other group of four and every other, in every possible permutation uh, yes. there could be. This is what I would do it. Should at least be able to cancel things out and not have to oh my God. that out. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> Seven thousand nine hundred twenty. <laughs> I should have. I should. Or have if uh, you know, if that's if we just need to find that out. And of course, we have the eleven. Hey, eleven times nine times ten times eight is seven times nine times ten. Nine shot. Other questions. Can I borrow some non super Yeah. Oh, I'm um, number 48. In which section? 10 times 10. 10 times 10. Wow. 48, you say? Yep. Okay, well, let's get our picture taker. So we're going to pick three CDs. I'm going to pick one, two, pick two from this group. Then we're going to pick a third from this group, and that's going to be our three CDs. Okay. So the first thing we do is to pick two contemporary CDs, and the next thing we do is to pick one classical CD. Groovy. So how many contemporary genres are there possible to choose from? Five. All right, so we're going to choose from five things. How many things do we want to choose from those five things? Two. Two of those things. In a way that order matters or doesn't? No, it matter. doesn't matter. So we use combinations or permutations? Combination. Combinations. A combination is just a group of things. It doesn't matter what order they're in. How many ways are there to choose one classical? So there's three. Just three. You don't even have to go into three C. So five C2 is less than five P2. Yes. It will always be that. Not always. Uh, five C one and five P one will be the same because we're just picking one thing. And if we're saying order matters with that one thing, there's no other way to reorder one thing. So 
So in general, NC1 and NP1 will be the same. Other than that, yeah, the C will always be less. The combinations will always be fewer. When can you choose not to use, uh, like, write it 5C, like 5C2.3 and stuff like that? When can you choose not to put that and just put the... For this? Yeah. Or not. Well, you're just choosing one of the things. So you could write it out as choosing from three things in a way that order does not matter and picking one of those things. But if you just think about, well, I'm choosing one thing from three things. It doesn't matter what order I pick it in. Just choosing one thing from three things. There's only one, three ways to do that. I choose this. That's one way. Or I could not do that. I could pick that one. That's the second way. There's the third way. There's only three ways to do it. Pick one thing. Right. If you did 3C1 and use the formula or use the calculator or whatever, that's just going to come out to be 3. And it won't really change anything. Right. So, combinations versus permutations yep. is math words that people usually mess up. Not so much the words, but the, when I say it doesn't order matter or math, I get that confused. Yeah, it does matter because well, it just depends on. How do you tell yourself order matters or doesn't matter? If you find yourself getting them backwards, then you talk to me and I'll help you figure out. Well, P is later in the alphabet and therefore has a higher number. So you can think of it like since P has a higher number in the alphabet, it will usually have a higher number in the actual order. That works for you? I just have a quick question yeah. because I wasn't here last time. Um, what you have over the 5C2, the two contemporary. Yeah. Do you actually do anything with that, or is that just a label? It's just a label. Yeah, okay. okay. Saying that's what we're doing. Okay. So maybe a like, box would be better. So it's like when someone says that something grows exponentially, they just usually mean really fast. And when someone says a lock has four million combinations, they yeah, usually mean permutations. One, four kings, and one other card. Four kings. So in other words, you just won a lot of money. One other, one and not king. First, let's pick the number, let's pick four kings, and then let's pick one not king. How many ways are to pick four kings? combination of cards that is all four kings, and that would be the combination that's all four kings. Now three kings, that's different. Two kings, one king, that's all different. But you pick four, all four kings, there's only one way to do it. You have to have all four kings. And order doesn't matter, there's not any more than that. All four kings is all four kings. So there's only one way. Or four, see all four of them. Now there's only one way to do that. Okay? How many ways are there to pick one other card that's not a king? 48, there are 48. Okay. Or 48C1, because they're choosing one of them, but 48C1 is going to be 48. Because they're choosing one out of a group of 48, there's clearly 48 ways for that to happen. So, well, a, a standard 52 card deck doesn't have joker. It just depends on what game you're playing. But it's not part of the 52 count. But a standard 54 count has joker. Yes. And a standard yeah. open system. Uh, we have two jokers, we have instructions, and then we can add the title. The standard of the card deck doesn't actually have 56 cards. I don't know if 56 cards are. You're talking about 56 card deck, you're talking about 52 cards, two jokers, and then some stuff. No, I think it has four jokers. Four jokers, two jokers. 
it's like some people they think that the uh, ace is high, ace is low and stuff. So when somebody picks a card and they get an ace, so they get all defensive, saying that it's, it's ace two three four. And well, they it depends on what game you're playing. Because Let's put everything away and get ready for this review, and you can talk as you do that. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Who? Twenty P fourteen. For, that, for the record, that was Brandon's question, which is to a great task. Well, it's it's sold he's got out. a good head on the shoulders. P14. Could be as easy as that. 3.379. 4 times 10. Or, <laughs> or it would be 20 factorial over 20 minus 14 factorial times uh, 14 factorial. 20 factorial over 14 factorial times 6 factorial. Would that also be uh, three quadrillion? Uh, let's see. Hold on a second. Wow. That would be um. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Three quadrillion. Chosen for first, second, and third chair. And then you have um, seven people get like eaten or something? Yeah, you just stay back there. <laughs> just play in a big group. <laughs> All right. So, how many are we choosing from? Ten. 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 Order matters. Order is important. Which we're choosing three of them. So, ten P3, it would be ten factorial over ten minus three factorial, ten factorial over seven. Which is 720. Uh, yeah. 10 times 9 times 8. So you pick from any of the 10 to the first, any of the remaining 9, any of the remaining 8, you multiply them all together. Or 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times divided by 7 times 6 times 5 times 2 times 3 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 times 
Well, how many ways are there? Stop talking. <laughs> how many people are we choosing from? Twelve. Twelve? Does order matter? No. Not really. No. How many are we choosing? Four. 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 Twelve factorial. Four factorial times four factorial. Four factorial over four factorial times. possible groups that you've put together. Unless you automatically vote someone because you want them to go out into the dangerous world. Or if you exclude people because they're injured or something, it wouldn't be really all useful anyway. So just think about that. So why don't we send out the injured people because they're not useful anyway? Because not only want them to make it back with your first stuff. Time. We don't want people to come off and die. Um, we're going to be talking about probability. How many of you have dealt probability at all before? Well, okay. hopefully you learned it all, and this is just review. But beware of possible things you may have learned incorrectly, and you need to be learned in, in the right way. That could have happened. You got it. Thank you. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Getting interrupted. Uh, so we're going to learn about probabilities, what they are, how to find them for single events. And then we're going to learn um, how to find probabilities of what are called disjoint or overlapping events. So since everything that can happen supposedly does happen in an alternate dimension, or well, alternate reality, and everything has a certain percentage of it could happen, that percentage applies to the number of realities that exist. So the probability of something like, uh, I'm ignoring you for now. Well, uh, I to talk about something math for you. Define, let's see. So the probability of a, a single event. Okay, so let's see if we're all on board here. So it's probability that you'll draw a king out of a, a deck of cards. So I want you to figure that out without shouting it out to everyone, without asking a ridiculous question, asking me how much coffee I've had today. <coughs> so the definition of probability simple form we can get to is the uh, number of ways the event happens. So the event would be the one that we describe. The, or the desired is fine, desired event. Down here we have the number of uh, all possible outcomes. Got this backwards. The first time we talked about this, I got this backwards. Outcomes would be the most simple thing. If you draw a card, it would be the most simple, describable thing that can happen when you draw a card. So we did find the number of ways that you could possibly draw a card. Here, an event could be a little more uh, specific, a little more detailed, uh, a little less general. Things like uh, getting a king or getting uh, an even number of 
card or getting a card that has these things that are sort of out of the red card, like we can get a little more broad. I mean, just talk about types of cards we might draw. Okay. King, that, that would be an event, the probability that we draw a king. How many ways can you get a king out of a deck of cards? Four. There are four kings. And how many cards, or how many ways are there to draw a card? Typically, there are as many cards. One out of 13. Or 70.69%. I would rather keep it exact if we can. Sometimes you can't, but now we can. So one out of 13, which is incidentally the number of kings there are in a single suit. Like there are 13 cards in the suit, one king in each. Um, what we're gonna get into uh, today in the, the next section is just trying to give you a preview of what we're talking about. We're gonna find probabilities of things called disjoint or overlapping events. So two different kinds of things. Um, so, like, what's the probability of drawing a red marble and a king? No, those we're going to get into are uh, independent and dependent events, being uh, two things happening. Okay, so in the first section, we might have, uh, you know, we might draw five cards, we might draw uh, two numbers or, or whatever. But in, in the second section, um, we're going to be talking about single events. So disjoint and overlapping are talking about single events. Not this happens, not draw a marble and then a card, or flip a coin and then roll a die, or something like that. It's just doing one thing. Okay. Now we, you're going to see the words like uh, A and B, like event A and event B. Okay. And that's actually describing one event, one thing, okay? but maybe different attributes. Okay. So let me give you an example of disjoint, okay? Two things that are disjoint, where they just couldn't possibly happen in the same thing, like in the same card. Let's use cards, for example. The probability of getting a king and a seven. Can you tell me, in, not a king and then a seven, but one card that's a king and a seven? It is impossible. It is impossible. So the probability would be how big? No. Zero. So when your probability oh, of wait, 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 wait. Kyler had that trick deck and there was a king one seven. This okay, is a normal so deck. Trick. So when the probability of this and that happening in the same thing, in the same card, in the same ball, in the same number, in the same whatever, uh, when it's zero, that's the definition of being disjoint. Uh, a way of seeing a picture of it being disjoint. You know what joint means? You join things together, things that are disjoint, but not joined together. So like here is all like the probability of getting, of getting kings. Okay. Here are all the ways that you can get sevens, and there is no joining them. There's no overlap. So the disjoint. So disjoint just means zero probability. Zero probability. So in, the probability of A and B, that means one item or one event being two things at once. When that's zero, when there's no possibility of that happening, that's what we call disjoint. You can see that over there in the red box, written it there too. That's the definition. Okay. Anything else where it's not zero, and obviously it's not negative, it's going to be bigger than zero, that's what we call overlapping. So if you have any kind of a notion of what overlapping might mean, you can give an example of two things that overlap. It could happen. You don't have to use cards, you can use anything that overlaps. A king and a spade. A king and a spade. A king and a spade. Because here are the kings. Okay? Here we're going to draw the spades. I have to decide am I going to do this? Completely disjointed? There's no overlap? Is there overlap? Where is there overlap between these two things? Of the king of spades. So there is this overlap where these things are kings, these things are spades, and this thing is both. The probability of a king and a spade would be one card. There's only one that's a king and a spade. Out of 52 cards total, one out of 52. What exactly is a jack? Get a deck of cards. Let's do it. I don't know what a jack is in real life. That's a good question. Okay. 
we're not there yet, but I just want to define what, what are disjoint and what are overlap. This is disjoint. They couldn't possibly happen at the same time in the same card, right? Now, if I choose two cards, that's a different story. That's 10.5, okay? We're in 10.4 here, right? Where one thing happens, what's the probability that it's this and that? What's the probability that you pick someone who is taking this class and this class? Well, it's one person taking two classes. Okay, that makes sense. What's the probability that you pick somebody who plays football and soccer? Well, that person could have those two attributes at the same time, okay? If you want to pick a person no. who is taller than six feet and shorter than six feet, it's not going to happen. You can't be both. Okay. Right, so let's just start with some simple probabilities, 10.3 basic probabilities. Okay, so we're going to pick a number from 150, and I want you to calculate the probability of getting a square number. What's a square? Four. 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 Oh, 16. 25. Okay, so you tell me what's the probability of uh, numbers from 150, what's the probability, don't just shout it out, just like, write it down and get it in the calculator. What's the probability of getting a square? Okay. So the number of ways you can get a square number over all the possible ways you can get a number. So you might choose one of two two ways probably would, would capture most people and the rest of people just wouldn't know what a square number was. So if you knew what a square number is when you count all, count all of them between 1 and 50, you might say, well, let's see, I know uh, 1 and 4 and 9 and 16. And you just count them until you get to the one that's too big, right? Which isn't entirely different from this approach, but this way you're just counting the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. The first way, you're, maybe you'll miss one. Actually, then you'll skip over yeah, one. Yeah, I started by going one, two, three, four. Uh, so then you, if you do two squared, then three squared, then four squared, now you have a way to count them where you're sure to get all of them all, right? You'll count the first one. Then you move on to the second one, definitely the third one, definitely the fourth Unless one. Unless you just go through the seventh one. Unless you skip from three to five for some reason. You see the difference between just calling from memory the ones that you know are square numbers and then just counting them. Okay, so this is, this calls them to question, are there more numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, just straight through, one, two, three. or are there more square numbers? How many are there more of them? More numbers. Okay. Let's say, how many, how many numbers are there? 50 numbers. How many square numbers can I give you for those 50, for those 50 numbers? 50. I'm not talking about in here, I'm talking about like in all the numbers of all the universe. Well, in in that regard, there's saying. an infinite number of numbers yeah. and an infinite number of square numbers. Okay, so which one is there more infinite of? No, neither. Numbers. Huh? Or neither, they're both. Technically what? Technically they're both infinite, therefore they're both the same amount. Yeah, well, there are different infinities. The whole uh, number infinity, <laughs> not the square number infinity. So, the number of infinities bigger, do you think? It's yeah. Huge. So let's say there's 5,000 regular numbers. Okay. Let's say, for some reason, let's say there's a 5,000. I'll go through one numbers, numbers one through 5,000, and square them all, and I'll give you just as many square numbers. Does that make sense? So they are exactly equal. They are equal. Isn't that what we said in the first place? For the wrong reason. And then I changed my answer, and it turns out that I'm wrong. I'm never paying attention to you again. Okay. You led me astray. <laughs> okay. Okay, how about uh, the probability of prime number? Probability of a prime number. What's a prime number? 
Okay, and f factors of one in itself and not one. One is not a prime number. One is not a prime special. number. Special. It is special. It goes into all. It's a special number. It doesn't have anything that goes into it, but it also isn't a prime number. Because it only needs one thing goes into one thing. Maybe. Okay. But that's what I want you to find. Find the probability of getting a prime number out of. So what do we get? 30 is exactly 30%. Because it is exactly 30%. 15 is 30%. 15, which is also out of 50, is exactly 30%. 3 tenths. That's me, sir. Okay, three yeah, tenths. Yeah. Break basic probabilities. Um, can we do something that doesn't require counting every number between zero and fifty? No. Yeah. <laughs> we can do that. Or we can. Between 7 and 8, that's when you leave your house. Anytime between 7 and 8, let's assume it's just kind of random which time you leave between 7 and 8. Okay? Also, between 7 and 8, definitely sometime between 7 and 8, the paper is going to arrive. The paper is going to go over to your house sometime randomly between 7 and 8. So randomly, you leave your house from 7 to 8, and randomly the, the uh, paper shows up between 7 and 8. What's the probability that? The paper arrives before you do, or at the same time as you do, and therefore you get to take the paper with you to work. Okay? Otherwise, if it shows up after, you've left before it arrived, and you can't still get to work. 50%. Why? Because it either arrives before you leave, or after you leave, it's random, and therefore there is no one. But you could leave at 7.15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it could arrive an infinite amount of times before mm -hmm. or after you. Yeah. Also, you could leave at 760. Yeah. It's not 50 50. Infinite percent. Yeah, but I assume we're taking this over a certain, over like 30 days or something, like, like no. your entire life. Just one any given day. On just one day. <laughs> what is the probability that you leave before it gets there? From 701 to 750. It arrives before you leave. It arrives before you leave. From 701 to 759. From 7 well, because you said between 7 and 8, which is 7 and 1 and 7 and 15. Then technically it would be 7 and 1 second. Or 7 and a half a second. So including 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock, you leave. Between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock, the paper arrives. What's the probability that you, the paper will arrive before you leave? Or it's the same time. 50%. Am I right? <laughs> I don't care if you're right. I want to know why you came up with that. Well, I want to know if I'm right before I define it and you lead me astray again. <laughs> <laughs> the answer because before or after doesn't work because if it if I leave at 7.15, there's not equal amounts of time between but before there, and after. But there is an equal chance of any point in time from 7 to set from 7 to 8, right? Okay, yeah. And there is an equal chance of time for any point of time between 7 and 8 for when the paper will get there. Okay. So it's like, so odds are, like, say you left at 7.30, uh -huh. the paper could get there either before or after you. But what if you don't leave at 7.30? But if you left, if you, okay, if you don't leave at 7.30, uh -huh. then the odds are still the same that you're, because because that doesn't affect the original odds of you could have left at any point in time, which is like one over infinity. So why does that how do they get this? 
for some reason, I think my head is the most. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and Gavin's gonna need my cold. I'm cold as hell. Okay. Here's one over two infinity. Here's <laughs> the case of infinity squared. <laughs> So if you try to count this in a normal way, there's just it, there's too many possibilities to count. How many times can I leave? Infinite. One number of times between seven and eight. That's infinite number of times. Wait, you can only leave once. There are an infinite number of choices <laughs> for when you can leave. Also, the paper has an infinite number of choices of when it can be delivered. Okay. So here's seven o'clock. Here's eight o'clock. Is there a way to solve this without a graph? I guess, I don't know, but we're going to use this. Okay, so here's 7 o'clock, here's 8 o'clock, here's a dot, say, right here. So each dot represents a combination of times that you leave and the time that the paper arrives. So, but this only represents if you, you get there and if you leave and the paper gets there. This one? When do you leave? And when does the paper get there? Okay, how about here? 8 and 8. So it's just How about the dot can go anywhere on that graph? Yeah, still <laughs> I'm just right. helping you get there. The line is going to be a perfect diagonal. <laughs> what? So this line <laughs> that's a perfect diagonal is what Gordon's saying. <laughs> but but they don't have to both get there at the same time. No, like, no. Which means you would have like an infinite number. Like you'd have to split it into two different colored dots and like completely fill in the entire chart with those dots. Well, or you do not. let's first talk about this line. Like well, sort of what happens if we put a dot on this line? Like, what does that represent? Point. That you're leaving sometime after 7.30. You left, so if it's a perfect diagonal, like this is when you leave at 7 and it gets there at 7. Here's when you leave at 8 and it gets there at 8. Here's let's when you leave at 7.30 it gets there at 7.30. Here's when you leave sometime after 7.30 it gets there at the exact same time after 7.30. Right? Like the two points on this line are the same. This is your leave time equals the arrival time of the paper. Which is y equals x. True. What's that? Which isn't necessarily true. Right, but that's what the line represents. All the times where you leave at the same time the paper arrives. Why do you leave that? It helps us put it up into two. Okay. What about over here? What happens here? The paper arrives there after you. You left at 7.10, and the paper arrived, obviously, sometime after 7.10, right? So this is, you missed the paper. Sad. Right? And every point in here represents the time when you missed the paper, right? Here, here, Wait, 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 here, wait, wait. here, the dot, here, here, here. the line be a dash, slash, dotted, slash, whatever kind of single line? because you're not including the line, because if you leave at the same time the paper gets there, then you still get your paper. So the odds are actually better for you to get your paper than for you to not get your paper. Uh, I guess we can think of that way, but. Like infinity plus one over infinity minus one. Okay, let's just keep going. Please. <laughs> this, all, anything that you put inside here is gonna be where you miss the paper, but what happens here? You get it. You Got get it. it. You le you've left at almost eight, and this arrived before even 7.30 arrived, yeah. came along. Okay, here. The paper boy drank you his almost, almost 8 o'clock, but this guy has already arrived, arrived well before that time, right? So any point in here means the paper gets there before you do, and you get to take the paper with you. Okay. So how do we figure out these probabilities? Well, there's an infinite number of points here. There's an infinite number of points over here. But... <coughs> If we look at the area, what's the area of this here? About 50%. Compared to everything. About half. That one is half of the total area. The area of the whole thing represents all the possible times that, you know, all the possible combinations. You leave at 7.35 and 16 seconds, and the paper arrives at 7.35 and 17 seconds, so you don't get so that's one possibility. But every other possibility is represented. Half of them are you getting the paper, and half of them are you not getting the paper. 
If you look at the ways Gordon was saying, if we look straight across here, okay? So this is when you leave, right? Yeah. Or actually, let's look at uh, let's look at it vertically. So let's say you leave at this time, and we look at all this. These would be all the times that you that the paper arrives after you've left, right? This is all the times that the paper arrives before you've left, so you get your paper. Right? So there's more times that it arrives before than after. But to go along with that, there's another point right over here where yeah, but it was this likely that it comes after, and it's just as likely down here that it arrives before. But it is more likely that you get your paper than not. Because you can arrive, the paper can arrive at the same time you're leaving, and then you get the paper. Well, in that specific instance, you leaving out of time, it is more likely that you miss your paper, but that averages out across all of the times that you leave. Yeah, yeah so it averages out to 50. Okay. This is so a right trail. Stop, please, 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 please. This class is the longest I've ever <laughs> experienced. <laughs> okay. So it turns out to be half. And the way we do that is not by counting all the possibilities, because there's an infinite number of possibilities. So we use what's called a geometric probability. Okay, we look at the area of all the possible things that can happen, uh, divided by all the the area of all the possible outcomes. Here's a, another wait, example. Wait, 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 wait. No. <laughs> Not run down you every rabbit trail you want to go down. You said before that if you no, I said no. <laughs> so stop. Okay. So if there were a square, say that was a four-inch square or four foot, it doesn't matter. There's a circle inside of that square. Okay, perfectly inside of that square. Is the four area or four width? Doesn't matter. That's just a side. It's a side length. So. The question here is, what's the probability that you throw a dart? And, and we're guaranteed to throw inside the square somewhere. What's the probability we'll hit the circle? Well, there's an infinite number of ways, number of points you can hit with that dart. So to try and count them all would be impossible. You can hit there, or there, or in the middle, or middle of that, middle of those, middle of, right? There's just an infinite number of points. There's also an infinite number of points in the square, so we can't count them all. What we can do is take a ratio of this area to this area. How do we find the area of a circle? Or if there's pi times radius cube. No, nope. that would be the volume of a sphere. Pi r squared. What's the radius of the circle? Two pi squared. Two. Two. So this is the. Oh, I'm sorry. This is four all the way across. So that would be half of that would be the radius. So that would be pi times 2 squared. What's the area of the square? A side length squared. A side length squared, 16. So 4 pi, right? This is 4 pi over 16. Which so that comes out to be is about 7 pi over 4. Pi over 7 4. 9. About 79%. But it's exactly pi over 4. It's exactly pi over 4. Exactly pi over 4, the probability that it'll hit within that circle. So pi being 1? No, pi being 3.14. Like pi is always big. Always oh, okay. I was just thinking like pi, like I'm not good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So pi over 4 is 3.14. Pi over 4 is 3.14. Okay. Yeah. Pi over 4 is 3.14. Okay. Just really quickly, just the difference between experimental and theoretical probabilities. Theoretically, What's the probability of rolling a six out of a on a, on a regular die, a six-sided die? One, 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 six. one and six. Theoretically, <coughs> that's what should happen. Now, if you roll a die twelve times, are you guaranteed it comes up twice? Mm -hmm. No. Sure not. If that happens, that would be uh, kind of sweet. <coughs> Just bet on that stuff all day long. You're like, well, six hasn't come up twice. So it's guaranteed to come up a second time. That doesn't happen. If you roll it 12 times, it might come up twice, once, three times, no times. All if it comes up times. all 12 times, now you start to wonder about the fairness of that die. Okay. Although it could, or the luckiness of it. It could be. It's very unlikely. Very, very lucky. But it could happen. Yeah, lucky. Now, 
if we roll a die enough times, we should start to see this ratio of one to six every time. You know, if, if we compare the sixes to the total number of rolls, uh, doing that is theoretical or is uh, experimental. We experimentally, we actually do the thing that we've been talking about theoretically. You want to talk about the, the probability of drawing a king being one out of fifty-two? That's theoretical. When you actually do it and you measure the number of times it happens, that would be experimental. But I should do it more. So just do uh, ten point three. Today, 